It's a Tour de France this weekend, in case you haven't been paying attention. The world's biggest cycle race, three weeks of gruelling racing around France. But I'm not here to talk about the racing, I'm here to talk about the new bikes, the tech and equipment that will be on display at this race in a few days time. Now, the Tour de France is massive, as you know, with a global audience, and it's a big shot window for all the brands that are involved that sponsor all the pro teams that contend at the race. And this race is the biggest part of the calendar for them, which is why we've seen lots of bikes being launched in the last few weeks, and a few more bikes that probably haven't been launched yet, but will be on display at Tour de France. So in the video, I'm not gonna talk about who's racing, I'm gonna talk about what they're racing, the equipment and the bikes that we expect to see. We've been having a chat in the office about some of the bikes and equipment we expect to see and some of the rumours we've heard about new stuff we haven't seen but we might see at Tour de France. So this video is a quick preview of what we expect to see and what we might see if the rumours are true. Let's start with three bikes we know will be at the race because we've been to the launches for these new bikes in the last few weeks. First up is a brand new Cannondale Super 6 Evo. All new bike, radical new appearance, more aero, stiffer and comfy than the previous version with wide tyres and designed with maximum integration with a new handlebar and stem to route the cables inside for cleaner lines and lower drag. It's also available with disc brakes but a choice of rim brakes so it'll be really interesting to see if the team EF Education first go for disc brakes or rim brakes so that will be an interesting one to watch out for. They also have the System 6 Aero Bike, which is only available with disc brakes, which they have been racing on this year. But the team haven't fully committed to disc brakes, so we'll be looking out for that one for sure. Next up is a really exciting bike. I've not seen it in the flesh, I've just read the press release. It's a brand new Scott Addict RC. Now, like Cannondale before them, Scott has taken their lightweight race bike and given it a bit of an aero makeover. Maintaining that low weight it's known for, increasing the stiffness, increasing the aerodynamics, and designing an all new handlebar and stem which integrates all the cables inside. Even mechanical gears can be rooted inside the new handlebar and stem. It's a really good looking bike, I can't wait to see it in the flesh. And interestingly, it's only available with disc brakes. So does that mean Simon Yates and Adam Yates will be racing the Tour de France on disc brakes for the first time? Well, it remains to be seen. I'll be having a closer look at their bikes when they prepare for the race in a couple of days time. So um, stay tuned for that one. The other new bike that we know will definitely be raced at the Tour de France because Matt went all the way to Italy to ride it. It's a brand new Villiers Zero SLR. Now like the Addict RC and the Super 6 Evo, this is the Italian company's lightweight race bike with low weight and high stiffness key priorities, but it's now updated with disc brakes only, there's no rim brake option, and they've got a brand new integrated handlebar and stem to keep all the cables and hoses inside the handlebar stem for clean lines and lower drag. Now that integration and that focus on disc brakes are two key trends that we're seeing emerging from uh, the bike launch we've seen this year and we'll be paying closer attention to at Tour of France. Those are three bikes we definitely know are coming, but there are a few more we might be seeing thanks hopefully to the UCI's list of approved equipment. Now basically if you're a bike manufacturer sponsoring a World Tour team, you have to get the UCI to approve your bike. All to do with safety, get a little sticker on a seat tube that says the bike being certified by the UCI. And on that list we can see there's a brand new Ridley Helium SLX disc, new Eddie Merckx 525 with or without disc brakes, and a brand new Cube Lightning. So we'll be going to those teams that ride those bikes to see what new bikes they indeed do have on offer. What else can we expect to see? Well, one brand that definitely stands out is Canyon. They launched the Air Road in 2014 at the Tour de France in Yorkshire. Then they launched the Ultimate in 2015. And they've both been updated with disc brakes since then but both bikes are still starting to show their age. Most bike brands work to a three year uh, model cycle for each bike. So all that development time, three years on the shelf and then they release a new bike, better, lighter, stiffer, so you know the drill. So will we see a new bike from Canyon? We've asked them, they've not said anything. So we'll be definitely paying attention to Katusha and Movistar, the two teams that ride uh, Canyon bikes and seeing if they do indeed have any prototypes um, on offer. We usually see prototypes being raced before the Tour de France because pros like to get plenty of miles in on the bike and race miles on the bike before they put it through the ultimate test, which is the Tour de France. Because the Tour de France is such a big race, it's so important. Um, it's basically too critical to roll out any new technology, new bikes and equipment that hasn't been tested in a race previously. So we'll be having a look at them, but we doubt we will see anything from them. Another brand that might have a new bike, but we haven't heard anything from them is Giant. Their TCR Advanced SL, their all round lightweight race bike, was last updated in 2016. So 2017, 2018, 2019, 
three years, it's about right for an update. So we'll be having a look at their bike seat if they do have anything new. What else can we expect to see? Well, on the bike front, not much, I don't think. Pinarello launched a Dogma F12 earlier this year with disc brakes or rim brakes. But Team Sky and now Team Ineos have shown no interest in disc brakes, so we expect the team to be on rim brakes. They have the Dogma F12 X Lite for the mountain stages, which is a lighter weight version with a crazy £6,000 price tag for a frame set. Uh, Merida haven't suggested anything new coming from them, neither have Bianchi. Uh, Trek launched a Madone SLR disc last year and I reviewed it just recently. You see my a link to that in the top corner there. Who else is there? Uh, yeah, I think that's everyone really. Well, not everyone, but those are all the big hitters we're expecting to see. So we'll be checking out all their bikes at the team hotel to see if there is anything new. I'll probably be totally wrong when we go to Tour de France, see loads of new bikes that I haven't even mentioned in this video. Uh, moving on from bikes, a few other things to talk about. Uh, disc brakes will be very popular this year and it'll be really interesting to see whether we're at a tipping point where more than half of the peloton are on disc brakes or whether rim brakes are still uh, dominant. So we'll be looking at, we'll do a head count actually, or a rim brake count or a disc brake count to see how many teams and riders are on disc brakes versus rim brakes and see where the, uh, where the balance lies. There are some teams like Quickstep and uh, Trek and Katusha are fully committed to disc brakes. I mean, Quickstep have had 46 victories this year going to the Tour de France, all on disc brakes as well. The other big trend this year from the new bikes we've seen is integration, which is basically a stem and handlebar designed to root all the cables and hoses inside for a cleaner look and lower drag. And that seems to be a real trend with some of the new bikes we are seeing, not just on aero bikes where it has been previously a key technology, but also on bikes that are designed to be lightweight, like the Super 6 Evo and the Addict RC as well. And we're really seeing a development of previously lightweight only bikes be given an aerodynamic makeover without sacrificing that low weight and really pushing closer to the benefits of an all out aero bike, but maintaining that low weight. Because aero bikes are notoriously heavier than a all round lightweight race bike. So there's an interesting one there. So two sort of developments of bike design converge in the middle somewhere, but how close they get will be one to watch for in the future. At the moment, there's still a clear difference between a lightweight bike and an aero bike. Now, the technology that we've been talking about for many years here at Road CC and banging on about every time we go to the Tour of France is tubeless. Will this be the year of the tubeless tyre? Well, probably not, because we've been wrong every year we said it. The tubular tyre, the tyre glued to the rim, is still king in the Pro Peloton for the main reason that if you have a flat, the tyre is going to stay attached to the rim, so you can ride further until you get a support vehicle. On the group set front, it's a clear case of domination for Shimano, with most teams on Shimano Durace Di2 11 speed, uh, two teams on SRAM Red ETAP Access 12 speed, and a couple of teams on Campagnolo Super Record EPS 12 speed. So a couple of teams on 12 speed and most on 11 speed. So it must be a nightmare for the neutral service, which is provided by Mavic with the uh, signature yellow cars, motorbikes and spare bikes. So we might go and try and have a look at those and see what cassettes they have on the back of those spare bikes and wheels and whether they get up for 12 speed as well as 11 speed. Most teams are still running two by with a front mech and a double chain set and either 11 or 12 speed cassette at the back. Pretty standard 53, 39 in most cases apart from SRAM who have the smaller uh, chain set offerings now with 12 speed. But a few of the SRAM sponsored riders, mainly the Trek sponsored riders have been using or dabbling with one by this year with various levels of success. So will they be using one by this year? Will any ride be brave enough to try a one by at the Tour de France? Well, we'll try and find out. We'll go and check out the bikes and see if they're on one by and what the SRAM guys are using in general. That's it for our Tour de France 2019 tech preview. If you've got any questions, any requests, do put them in the comment section below. We do read all the comments, so get down there and put any requests for bikes you want us to see or teams you want us to check out down there. Also, make sure you check out our Road CC website where there'll be daily reports from the race with our live blog. Also check out our social media at Instagram and Twitter. I'll put those links in the description below. Make sure you also subscribe to our channel here on YouTube as well so you don't miss any future videos from the Tour of France in the coming days and weeks as well. Hit the like button if you enjoy watching the video as well. It means a lot to us. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again next time.